This is Play North, the Manitoba Game Show. I'm your host, Bruce Krentz. Joining me today is Debbie Bellier. Just before we talk about keeping people where they should be and where they shouldn't be, uh, we'll remind you to go to www.manitobagames.ca. If you want to volunteer, you click through the links and uh, you could be part of the Manitoba Games powered by Manitoba Hydro. They're coming here to Thompson March 4th to 10th, 2018. Uh, Debbie, in a sense, you've been training for your volunteer position for a long time. I don't know if you call it training, really, but when you signed up with the Music Parents Association, did you think you'd be head of security? Well, there are certain times when certain people ask you certain questions that you can't say no. <laughs> and there are some certain people out there that it's their fault I'm doing what I'm doing now. So thank you to those certain people. That's a heck of a shout out. That's a sound bite we're going to drop on uh, Facebook for sure. <laughs> so you've been doing security with the North Stars for a couple of years and now access control is a position with the Manitoba Games that you've agreed to take on. They're pretty similar, but can you tell us what is access control? It sounds sort of like some government lingo, sort of double speak, but what's it all about? It really is. Access control is fundamentally security, but what we do is we control who can come in and out of the facilities to keep everybody safe. So I'm not going to strong arm anybody who's being rotten. That's what we have, you know, police and, and other people for. That's not our job. Our job is, in fact, excuse me, to ensure that the people who are going into the villages are allowed into the villages, the people who are going into the medical services are allowed into medical services, and the people going in to get food are allowed to be there. And that's all controlled by your badge which is why it's really important that you register at www.manitobagames.ca. You betcha, because as... That was another good sound bite. There you Excellent. go. As you register, what happens is you um, will get a badge at the games, and on the badge will be little pictures. And it's the little pictures that tell my access control people who's allowed where. Ooh. So you'll have a little uh, village picture, and that'll say you're allowed in the villages. And if you don't have a village picture on your thing, you're not coming in. <laughs> which, which I probably won't, because mine will have a picture of a microphone. There you go. <laughs> um, actually, it might. you might yeah. actually have villages, but we'll see then. So that's what access control is. It's fundamentally to keep everyone safe and to keep people where they're supposed to be and keep people who aren't out. Yeah. And I think, uh, a lot, especially for parents coming from out of town, I think, uh, or sending their kids here uh, on their own or with a team, uh, this is some pretty important stuff that, uh, that we know that we are controlling who gets in where, right? It, sometimes I think we feel like it's overkill, and like you're saying, you're not uh, out to beat anybody up, you're not busting any heads, but you're just keeping people safe. That's exactly it. And the best part is, at the villages, we have uh, some needs at every village. We have 24-hour care at the villages. So we have a boys' village, a girls' village, and the officials' village. And there will be access control people there 24 hours a day for the duration of the games. That's really important to know because we are making sure people aren't coming in who aren't supposed to be there, period. People are safe. So 24 hours a day sounds to me like a lot of hours and a lot of people. So uh, you mentioned some of the venues that you had. Maybe, maybe run through all the different venues you're going to be at and how many volunteers you need. Because this sounds to me like you're probably one of the biggest numbers in our volunteer needs uh, in all of the games. Well, actually, uh, when you look at the shifts, I have over 500 shifts to be filled. Whew. On a okay. scary note, that's not really 500 people, though. Because if someone volunteers every day for a shift, then that's a lot of shifts being taken. For sure. So during the daylight hours, the uh, girls and boys village each need six people on per shift. And I have three daylight shifts. And then I have an overnight shift, which I'm hoping to be able to pay a service group or a volunteer group to do the overnight shift, which is a really cool thing. Sound bite number three. So if you and your group are looking to make a little money and get involved with the games, get in touch with Debbie Bellier. You betcha. And you can do that by uh, my email, dbellier at mysterynet.mb.ca, or even my cell phone at 679-1403. On that happy note, at the uh, officials village, I need less people. Uh, that's four per daylight shift. Um, at medical services, I need someone to make sure people going in and out belong there. There are two people, and that's at the TRCC. And then at food services, which is here at Artie Parker, uh, I need six people a daylight shift. So, and there's three shifts. Whew. 
And I, I think it's interesting you bring that up that uh, it's 500 shifts, but you don't necessarily need 500 people. But I feel uh, in a little bit of our volunteer recruitment, we've been saying to people, we need a four hour shift or you know, maybe we could split it and it could be two hours. But uh, I think there's people out there like me and you that are willing to put in a lot more than four hours. And so if you're looking to take the week off and get involved with a team and be part of a group that works together every day, give us 30 hours, Absolutely. 40 hours. My shifts uh, are about five or six hours. That's kind of the average. It just seemed better having less shifts than more mm -hmm. shifts because more shifts means more people. Um, that said, it's not rocket science. Actually, what I really, really want is I really want some grandma and grandpa types to run my table at the villages. So I'm definitely looking for grandma and grandpa types, some retired folks who can do those, those shifts. So once again, where can they volunteer? At? www.manitobagames.ca. Uh, www it's it's going to be right here. And Paul's even going to put your email address there. That'd be awesome. Well, <laughs> let's, let's not get too carried away. <laughs> I think we covered it all. Debbie Bellier, thanks for joining me. Access control. We can use some people there. You don't have to be a tough guy. Wait, wait, wait. Are you struggling to register? We have lots of fantastic people who mm -hmm. are allowing that or helping out with that. Uh, I'm sure that it's been on your other shows too. And this weekend, if you want me to help you out, you can just contact me at my email or my cell number, 679-1403, and I'll make arrangements to walk you through that process as well. Perfect. And kind of what you're referring to as well is Steps for Success are holding sessions for uh, anybody really who's either struggling at home, if you don't have a computer, or if, if walking through the process is giving you grief. Come on down to Steps for Success. Uh, it is one of our shows. If you want on access control, you actually have to click access control as you do your registering. And it's easy peasy. As you work your way through it, that's Debbie Bellier, Access Control, telling us how to get involved with the Manitoba Games, www.manitobagames.ca. We've said that like 10 times, but it, we just can't say it enough. Manitoba Games, powered by Manitoba Hydro, coming to Thompson March 4th to 10th, 2018. Look for us on the web at hashtag PlayNorth.